everyone. Actually, I'm still young. I'm still at my early 30s. <laughs> and I'm still working my way out. Okay, today I'm going to talk about two projects. Uh, one is uh, community projects, one is uh, commercial projects. I'm going to start with the community project first. Uh, it was uh, 2014 when Malaysia was hit by a very serious flood. Uh, it's affected a few states in Malaysia, including Kelantan. Uh, we were approached by an uh, NGO called Imarat. Uh, they are basically doctors and nurses from uh, private and uh, local hospitals doing some flood relief help to the victims. Uh, they have focused their help in Dabong. This, this area in Kelantan is on the upper stream, slightly lower than the Guamusan. So I think everyone knows that Guamusan is a place uh, where a lot of illegal logging happens. So uh, they approached us, uh, they wanted my boss, Ng Set San, to come up with an idea of a house that can withstand the flood, the coming flood, because uh, the amount of time the villagers uh, required to recover to the normal life uh, is a lot there. Uh, it happens in December 2014, but uh, when we went in for help, it's around March 2015. But the build lasts until 2016, about two years. So we come out and then we, we group together with Epic Home. Epic Home is another NGO doing a lot of, a lot of build for rural area for Orang Asli. So Epic is very experienced in doing all these uh, houses. They can build it very quick for four to five days. And then they got the template, it's a bit like IKEA, but it's, it's IKEA for house. They got all the insulation method, and then they can train volunteers for a few days, and then they can send them in to build the house. So I think working with them is the wise move, and then uh, we need to do a bit of tweak on their existing houses in order to take to tackle the situation. So we came out together with them, and then end of January, before Chinese New Year, we went to the uh, Kelantan Dabong for a site recce. Well, God, uh, this is, this is uh, one of the photos that I took during the site recce. A lot of the villagers are drawing their stuff outside. So um, we got a local agent. It's something like a Ketua Kampung in, in the area to, to, to shortlist a few families that we think that, that I think uh, is the most needy. Uh, and then we, go, we went in and then we interviewed the families with Epic Homes, try to find out the situation of the flood, what happened, where does the river, the water come from, how high is the water level. And the water level actually goes up to until 6 meters. Uh, some area goes up to 10 meters. So actually the whole house is under the water. So this is some of the side photos. The river is actually not so wide. Everything becomes wide. Uh, roads destroy. Uh, slides everywhere. And then this kampong, some of the kamp most of the kampongs in Dabong are their kampong, but the kampong is very big and then all the houses are scattered around. So you actually you can't walk from one house to the other house. But this particular kampong is more dense, um, it's by the river. So it got very serious uh, damages. The whole kampong is gone actually. So some of the house, some of the houses are bricks house, some are timber house, traditional timber house on stilts. Those brick house are okay, they stay in camp. But the timber house, especially those on stilts, because they don't have the connection, they don't, they, they don't have a boat and nut connection uh, between the house and the stilts. So they basically just rest on the stilt and then they are being uh, carried away and then uh, detached, disattached. This one fallen off. We did a one, one day slide recce. We went to five families. And uh, the interesting part is uh, because the founder of Imarat, uh, the father who worked for JPJ, uh, quite a high position. So we got a JPJ escort ready to bring us everywhere. So it's like uh, VIP. So we recce until night time. This is the kampong that the water level goes up to 10 meters. You can see the carpets 
you can see the carpets is on the tree. And then when we went, when we were on the side, some of the chicken and some of the goats still on the tree. After a few months. <laughs> Quite serious. So I, I never imagined this kind of uh, magnitude of flood happening in Kelantan. We read it in the newspaper, 10 meters, 6 meters, doesn't, you don't feel anything. But when you went there, you feel scary. So during the site recce, we found some of the houses that did this extension of their house using BRC netting. So uh, most of them survived because of the porosity. So we try to take this as the uh, our design thoughts for the flood relief house. Our first prototype that we hope can be it can help the villagers. So uh, after some of the interviews, uh, we decided to choose this family uh, together with Epic um, because they have a, a grandma, the, the mother is pregnant and then one of the children got bone cancer. And then this house is uh, nearer to uh, our base camp. So as, as a first project, I think it's easier for us. So we can learn from our first project, can learn from all the mistakes. So, uh, epics can improve on the following houses. Okay, these are the condition for the house, fallen off from the footings, and then this is the kids. One, one thing about they are still quite happy despite the flood. And then some of them actually they started to go back to school, but uh, meanwhile they are still cleaning their houses. It takes months. Some of them, uh, the flood hits again even when they are still doing the recovery. So when we go back to KL, Epic, Epic actually did more, most of the things. My office, my office actually just used our mouth to work on it. <laughs> Epic did all everything and then they do all that. They, they, they are able to uh, uh, mobilize a lot of uh, volunteers because they got a database. And then um, they, we did a bit of brainstorming uh, on uh, modifying their houses. So what we did basically is we studied the where the river comes and then we designed the facade facing the river to be porous so we try to design a second scheme for the building for pri uh, privacy using tr uh, uh, creepers or uh, trellis so when the floods comes uh, it doesn't affect so much because the facade is quite porous just like the BRC so uh, this is uh, March, early March, and then Epic Home got everything done in uh, their workshop, fabricate all the, all the Mac steel uh, construction members in their workshop, and then they uh, send them over to Dabong with the help of Imarat and the local agent. So day one, uh, Epic went in to do the things first. They do all the hard job actually. Uh, they build the footings in day one while we are still on the bus. <coughs> on the way going to Dabong. So next, the next day, they started to erect the steel column and beams. And then while there are a few teams working together on this house, actually, uh, the Epic team working on the main buildings, uh, they are the main workers, actually. So Saksang and our office and our friends, we got a small team, we are responsible to build walls for toilets, the easy part. Uh, when they are building the main structure, we are still figure out how to build a wall. And then uh, the other team, the BGBG, just uh, somehow we mentioned, they are responsible for door and windows. And then some uh, miscellaneous items. And then another guy is responsible for the toilets. So the, we build everything except for plumbing and wiring. We hire a locker to do it. Okay, this is second day. The third day, uh, roof, uh, roof rafters, floor joists, these are all built by Epic. We are still figuring out how to build the wall. We are still figuring out how to calculate all the holes on the BRZ, how many to cut, because we got limited materials on site. We cannot waste them. So we need to do it very slowly, but within four days. So uh, day three, we started to build the toilet walls actually. Quite nervous. So I'm going to show you a video on the process. This 
these are the epic guys that were not in the video because we are not so important actually. sustain um, off the home. Uh, but the idea was to see how could we use um, the building system that we've developed in the last five years and combine it together with other ideas as well to ensure that uh, we have as many options as possible for the vehicles. I show you a lot of the houses, so now maybe I show you a bit of what my my team did there. <laughs> this is what we did. We just actually we are playing around with uh, VRC netting. Our idea is to use a simple material, but uh, you you can end up with a lot of variations. So we fold the VRC, interlock them a bit, and then try to find local available materials to fill in to create a wall that is uh, porous, but hopefully uh, beautiful for the owner. So this is the wall that we use. Some we use bamboo, some we use uh, rubber stones, timbers found on site, even mud balls, dry leaves. And uh, we use it for the toilet walls. For the toilet walls, the upper part, uh, we leave it quite, um, leave it empty. So we don't, we don't need to do so much work because we just got four days. And then this is the bathroom actually. So, uh, rubber stone floorings and then the uh, bamboo at the top for screen. This is our work, our team. The epic did the big house, we did the toilet walls. So, <laughs> so this is the facade that the facing, the facing the flood. So this is the porous part that we hope it can work. Uh, it can it can help the house stand in the coming floods. This is a door inside for the uh, bedrooms. We got three bedrooms at the top, one big bedroom at the bottom. The one big bedroom at the bottom is for the grandma, and uh, ba bathroom at the bottom. So next to the grandma's bedroom and the open kitchen. This is the final photos. The staircase is exposed. So uh, one concern about. After the build, one concern about open staircase is we thought that uh, these uh, communities in villages, we thought they are okay with the uh, staircase outside. Actually, they don't like it, the staircase outside. They are concerned about safety and animals. So these are the facade, the forest, forest facade, the outdoor kitchen at the bottom and then the grandma's bedroom, the toilets at the side. Some photos on the interiors. Front elevation. There's a one house. Actually, we decided not to build on the existing uh, footprint of the house because we want, because we only have four to five days to build. So after Epic study everything, they think building on the new site is faster. So we built it at the front of the old house. You see, this is the back side. We do a bit of protrusion on the, on the wall for shelves and storage. So uh, after a few days, uh, we, when we came back to KL, uh, but when you ask the owner, are you happy with everything? Uh, everything he said is okay, oh, thank you for coming. And then we like the house, everything. But after a few days, they started to modify the house. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they wore up the lower part um, to make it more enclosed. Uh, they modified the toilets. Uh, and then uh, I think a lot more that we, we, we didn't know. 
so but luckily we got this uh, we got them to try out on the trellis which uh, I don't know whether they like it or not but uh, the effect is quite nice so Epic, Epic, Epic continues to develop version 2, version 3 for the following houses uh, learning from the first mistake so these are, they are this is the first one uh, second one, third one, there are, there are more actually but we don't have all the 3Ds you can see it slowly slowly after all the feedbacks the house is a solid house eh? so actually I don't know whether we got a chance to test our idea of the, the porous wall so they continue to, to build epics, do a lot of uh, uh, advertising in Facebook you can see all the updates all the builds. There, there, there are a lot of sponsors coming in, big corporate companies. Sometimes they send their workers there to do team buildings, <coughs> building a house as a team building program. So normally they do it for five days. Some of the house are single story, some of the house are double story. So one house, I think it costs them about 60k to 70k, which is quite cheap actually. Some more photos, you can see all the volunteers. I think the true heroes in this kind of project is the, is the, are the volunteers. Sometimes architect really, can, I think for disaster relief projects, uh, it's very hard, it's really a different kind of um, design for architects, which I think a lot of things we need to scale down and then the way we design, I think it's totally different. So Imara still doing a uh, very good job in helping the disaster victims. They are still, they are now in Palu helping them. So, um, in conclusion, for this uh, uh, flood relief house uh, program, uh, Epic took, took it about two years to finish uh, a total of 28 homes uh, for 17 Malays and uh, 11 Oran Asli. So, uh, there are some thoughts to share about doing a community job like this um, because we are based in KL and then uh, the, the site is in Kelantan. A lot of things we need to base on trust uh, on the local agent when we ask them to identify uh, those family that we think we need to help, we need to trust them. And then there's an argument that some of the families actually they have second house somewhere else so they are not, not the most needy. So it's very hard to uh, look out for all this information. That's the thing. So, Orang Asli are more open to ideas. They are okay with open staircase. They, they are okay with open toilets. But uh, for the Malay communities, we have to do, they have to do a bit more enclosed version. But after all this build, there's only one house being tested uh, for the coming floods, which is a solid one. But uh, it still stands, but because hopefully, uh, thankfully, but uh, because the flood is not as serious as 2014 floods, so we'll see if there's any flood in the future. So now I'm going to talk about my second project. It's a commercial project. So it's, this is a project with a Garis architect. So I, I'm a landscape architect actually. So um, I'm a landscape architect for this project. So I'm going to talk about just the, um, this, I'm going to talk about only on this area. We call it the North Court. It's a completed broad project two or two years ago. So the overall thing, it will look something like this. So I'm going to talk about on the, more on design process uh, on this commercial projects, on how we came up with this idea and the, uh, the process to come up with this kind of structures. We are landscape architect, but we, 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 we do a lot of uh, landscape structures for our projects. So when I got this project, it's handled by my ex colleague actually, so I came in just to carry forward. So I got, these are the info I have. It's a very rough plan, it's a draft actually. So, and then my colleague briefed me and said, uh, the client sent us to not me but my boss to Thailand for looking for inspiration. He sent the whole consultant team including QS. So for looking for inspiration for these projects. So they went to Thailand and then 
After a while there, they come back with this idea of they wanted to do a pinnacles in the courtyards. So, uh, okay, uh, I, I'm not the one who went to Thailand, but I have to do the job. So, luckily I got internet. So, I got this 3D built by my escalate. Um, and then he asked me to figure out how to implement this uh, idea into the whole thing. Okay, so I started with a blank piece of paper. This, these are the shops. These are all shops uh, around. It's a big courtyard. So, these shops are four story, four story shops, double volume at the top, and then uh, I think four meter at the, at the top. So, um, when I got this blend paper, actually it's very hard to design as a landscape architect because as a, for, a, for a blend area like this, so I need to find my departure point of where to, where to start. So I started to look into architectural drawing, to look into circulation. So I, I imagine myself working in this mall and then I realized it's very hard to go up to the top. So I started to insert my pinnacles as a circulation space so people can walk up to the top in outside the building. They don't have to go in and come up, go in and come up. That's the basic idea. And then all these shops are facing each other. So we try to create something in the middle where they don't feel there's any more shops in front of them. So the first thing I did is uh, I studied the height and calculated the staircase. And then uh, these pinnacles actually uh, consist of two components. One we call it the tower component, one we call it platform components. The platform is actually the uh, circulation area. The tower components are sh small shops uh, for rental. Hopefully to add a bit of... The, the, the developer decided to rent these shops at very a few hundred ringgit per month in order to uh, encourage new startup new people with new business, especially young entrepreneurs to start up their business there to create a kind of diversity there instead of uh, the normal franchise uh, shops. More study on the type. In the end, I developed two types. Uh, I call it pinnacles, model A and model B. Model A is three cluster pinnacles. Model B is the two cluster pinnacles. So I put it into the courtyard and study the, 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 the sizes of them in relation to the courtyard size and the buildings. So you can see this, this is, we call it level three. So actually it brings people up to level four. And then we extended the, the balcony of the architectural. We do a bit of zigzag. So just to bring people closer outside. And then we develop two types. Uh, one we use a bit like pinnacles. One we do the typical easy one. So I do the easy one just in case I'm the one who handled the project later, so I can do it easily. Uh, but it ends up we're gonna do this. So I need to grab my hat. So for this project, we started every. I started everything in SketchUp. I didn't do any uh, cat drawing because of the shapes. So I studied everything in SketchUp, tried to build a precise SketchUp as possible as I can, a light mode, a light one because it's gonna be very heavy. So you can see the evolutions, you know, this one quite ugly, and then hopefully it gets better. And then when I do this uh, form, actually it affects the, the 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 room size inside. So I actually I need to uh, do a bit of the four plan, do a bit of the it's a it's a two way. Uh, design. So I put it down. Uh, you can see some of them are quite ugly. So this is still in the process. So we do two. Actually, we, we built seven. I designed seven. In the end, I decided to put in another two. We call it out, uh, outdoor pavilions. It is to because I because this level three to level four is a six meter high volume. But in the end, we managed to carry landscape to level, intense landscape to level four. For level five and level six, we use balcony. But because we wanted to do more on the rooftop, but because of the loading issue. Because we, we came up with this idea quite late, actually. So this is more refined 3D. And then uh, 
Boom. And then after that, we add up another simple model, another three simple model, just to, for people to walk up from level four to level five and from level five to level six. So because we only have one escalator in this courtyard, which is this. So if you're at this corner, you, you when you want to go up, you need to walk all the way here and then go up again. So we try to prevent that, try to give people more options to go up through the landscape. Study a bit on the eye level, on level four. So um, the tricky part when I try to do cat drawings for this project is the envelope because the QS needs the quantity to do it. So uh, my process is um, I do it in SketchUp, do a single line form and then study the, the, the dimension, everything, and then record them and cut it in. So I unfold the, uh, the envelope. So I got the precise drawing, the precise dimensions. So the dimension is what show in the, uh, my 3D. So I, I did a lot of um, 3D building. I think I did at least five times rebuilding everything from scratch. So in the end, uh, because it's, it's quite complicated, uh, so I use colors in SketchUp to record all the, uh, info, the, the information that I have coordinated with the engineer. Things like the maximum overhang, uh, the space in between envelopes and the, and, and the slab. So this is because I'm a landscape architect in this project. So when we do all these structures uh, for coordination, actually the engineer doesn't look at our drawing because they are just too busy with the main buildings. There's a lot of things to, to, to tackle there. So every time when we send this drawing to them, they doesn't reply. So I, I need to do a colorful drawing for them. Just like you do, just like for the kids. So they can at least they come up with a bit of feedback. So the structure, um, I develop a detail and then ask the engineer to, to command. Be a bit of SketchUp to see the effect because my worry when we do this design is uh, we worry that the things will be too clumsy in a small courtyard. So we did the 3D just to look at the effect, especially the envelope. So using color to identify the uh, member size for the engineers to command. So they are easier to look at 3D compared to uh, drawings. This is the tallest uh, unit. From this point to this point, uh, it's about 10 meters. So when we built this one on site, the, the contractor actually cursed me. So these are some of the drawings that I did for the engineer. So easier for them to read. So they can feedback to me quickly instead of uh, black and white cat drawing. Putting some door and windows to study. We did a bit of detail on the uh, railings. It's a very simple one. We designed a few, it's very simple for designer. We do a few version, uh, different extension at the bottom because with our platform zigzag up to the top, so some area you got high volume. Those with high volume, we have more extension on the railings. Those lower one, we got shorter extension on the railings. And the contractor cursed me as well on this <laughs> because they are quite rushing. So we got all this thing to, to catch out them. And then uh, construction uh, site visit, quite scary. This is when they constructed the columns and the flat slab. So when I designed the slab, everything is flat slab system. Um, the thickness for the slab is actually 225, but I got a profile at the side that from, the, from below, it looks like 100. So this is from the board, this is from the shots. So we got a lot of columns, we got a lot of columns actually. So uh, at one point we are quite worried about the tenants complaining about the columns uh, because of feng shui. But in the end, and they are okay with it because we got a lot of green to distract them. <coughs> so when the scaffolding go up, lose a bit like soft so with Emoto's building. <laughs> so this is the mock-up unit. 
the contractor actually did a lot of mistake in the mock-up unit, but uh, because of the, the the amount of time we have, uh, we're gonna leave it that way. No choice. The client also decided that way. So some details on the state case. So try to do it because of the clamp. We worried about the clumsiness of the building in the courtyard. So everything we try to do it in the floating way. So the slab is a flat slab. From below, it looks like floating. Even the state cases, uh, we design it as, as if it's floating. Some details on the envelope. So this is how they construct a 10 meter envelope. They weld it piece by piece. They do the L angle frame, brace it with ropes, and then they weld it on the floor, hoist it up. On the frame, they try to pull it to the main frame. This is the post module when they completed. They completed Pinnacle B first. So uh, I felt quite happy when I went to site seeing this. So it doesn't look very uh, clumsy for me, but uh, some of my friends, when they went to site after completion, they say, uh, they say it's too clumsy. So different people, different uh, comments. So uh, some of the site photos, what I like about um, this no, courtyard is when I walk around the space in between the pinnacles, some of them, they are quite, quite close to each other from the top. So as if they are kissing each other. So all this, uh, funny funny space below i think is uh, very interesting this is a longer staircase uh, that we have in the pinnacles this is nine meters it's a nine meter span staircase so the staircase from the top the staircase from we are look from the below so um sometimes when we go to site is I, I should have checked on the defects, but sometimes I go and take this kind of photograph. You know, sometimes these uh, workers, they are quite clever, you know. They use the leftover over material. Because subsidiary is very hot. You can see before and after. This is the uh, another pavilion that we top up just to create another level or landscape when you are standing on level, level 3 looking up. Is is function as a uh, because this this may be some F uh, F and B shops that they're gonna rent out for small F and B not like Starbucks, uh, so if they are doing good business, they can rent this part to put more chairs and tables. So before and after on the tallest pinnacles, this is a around ten meter envelope. Actually, the engineer designed a tie back to the structure. When we do coordination, he said, well, 10 meters is too tall, we need a tie back. So, but it doesn't look good. Then I said, oh, never mind, okay, lah. we do the tie back. But during the construction, because the contractor missed up the tie back, and then when I went to site, then I leave it. <laughs> it's still standing there. And then we got this idea of doing a, a stream uh, around the pinnacles. So um, our initial idea is to create a flowing river with uh, jets on the wall. It's a, bit, it's a bit like those people doing koi pond. Uh. You got the uh, nozzle and the side wall to give the fish a bit of muscle when they swim. But we want to create the river flowing. But in the end, the cost is too high. So we, we do a, a normal biofiltration or water pond with small fish. So some opening on the uh, level four about extension balcony to bring the lights down to the planting below. Creepers going up to the uh, railings and the, and, and the envelope, big leaves, small leaves. And then we got a uh, GI planter all around all this uh, irregular slab, just to give, the, just to give the another uh, height to the uh, creepers. So they don't have to come up all the way from below. Some are planted from below, some are from the middle going up. So it covers the mesh faster. These are the view from the shops where we are worried about all these columns. We are worried about the tenant complaining the columns disturbing their feng shui. 
So uh, in the end, we colored the column in brown, so it looks maybe it looks a bit like tree trunk. So some creepers going up, some creepers coming down to distract them a bit. Some of the common area in the courtyard. This is a structure that can rent out. Some view from below. This is the where you stand in between the pinnacles looking up. I'm going to show you some of the uh, uh, views that you see from level 3 slowly going up. This is on level 3. Uh, this is on level 3. You can see when you are looking up. This is on level 6. You can see the human scale. You can see the scale of the pinnacles. On level 4, sometimes you see a flat angle like this which is quite interesting. But it, this doesn't last long because when the tree grows, uh, you can't see it anymore. So you got this uh, different kind of view from time to time because of the trees. Level 5. It's a bit like uh, pinnacles coming up from the valley. Some people say this uh, aliens ate. <laughs> Level 6, you see the top of the pinnacles. This is a level which we wanted to do more intense uh, plantings, but in the end, uh, we got the loading issue. So, so when we work together with Garis Architect, actually we're quite happy to work with Garis Architect because Garis Architect is an architect who really appreciate a lot of landscape. So we work around very closely. So when we do this, um, Garis Architect actually designed a module for this uh, uh, extension of the balcony and then in the end they want us to give them input on the location actually we decide the location of the balcony for them these are the uh, the pinnacles viewing from the center court okay that's all <laughs>